Hey everybody, welcome to the Mass Retirees Weekly Roundup. I'm Sean Duhamel. Today is Friday, September 18th. Thank you so much once again for joining with us. I've got a bunch of things for you today. First and foremost, this afternoon at 1 p.m., so Friday afternoon, 1 o'clock, we are hosting Mass Retirees Annual Meeting. It's taking place virtually, of course. Um, normally, we would be hosting this event down in Randolph at the Lantana. Sadly, we're not able to do that, but we're doing, gonna do the next best thing that enables us to stay in contact with each other, for us to get valuable information to you, and for us to hear back from you. And the way to do that right now is through these telephone town halls that we've been holding with great success. The turnout has been amazing. I expect the turnout this afternoon to be phenomenal. And the way for you to participate is quite simply, you have two ways. You can either call in at the toll-free number that we've provided to you. It's in the email message that you'll receive today. It's in the September edition of your newsletter. Um, if you don't have it, give our association a call. Call the office or call me. Happy to provide it to you. Um, these events are open to Mass Retirees members only. So that's why we don't publish this number online. It's something, it's a benefit that's available to dues-paying members only. Um, so, but again, if you're a member, you don't have the number, give me a shout. Now we had hoped, as I mentioned last week, to include a video option um, with this event. And after a series of tests, we reached the conclusion that it just wasn't a viable option right now. Um, my worst fear every time we do one of these events is the technology failing. We already had a server crash. Um, the system that we use is based out in the Midwest. They had a serious power outage about three quarters of the way through our meeting with Secretary of State Bill Galvin. And for those of you on the line, you know that everything just quickly went down. Uh, we want to avoid that. And if you're going to introduce video to the equation, things just get more complicated. And we want to keep this as simple as we possibly can to help you participate in a way that doesn't provide anxiety, isn't, is not going to tick you off, um, isn't going to leave you annoyed. We don't want to do any of those things. So we're going to use the old fashioned telephone, whether it's a landline or a smartphone or whatever phone you have, you can call in and participate. The other way you can participate is by receiving the automated telephone call from me at one o'clock this afternoon. For those of you that we have a telephone number for on, on record here, you're gonna receive an automated call. All you need to do is stay on the line and you'll be automatically connected to the meeting. Now the meeting itself is gonna run about 90 minutes. This is our annual business meeting, so we have a lot of different things we have to go through. Thankfully, this year is not an election year for association officers. Hopefully, by this time next fall, uh, the pandemic will be behind us, there'll be a vaccine, and we'll once again be able to come together in person, have a celebration, because believe me, I think we're all going to be in the mood for a celebration by then, uh, but we'll be able to do it in person. But for now, Again, it's just, it is what it is. So in addition to updating you of what we've been up to and hearing from our staff, talking about different issues, we're also gonna have two guest speakers today. Um, Senate Ways and Means Chairman Michael Rodericks from the town of Westport, Mass, will be on with us to talk about the state budget and other activities that are before the state Senate. House Republican leader, Brad Jones from North Reading will also be our guest. Now, both of these legislators are well known to our association. They're good friends of ours. They've always been active supporters of public retirees and we're very pleased that they're gonna take time and that they have the time this afternoon uh, to spend a few minutes with us and, and give you an update firsthand as to what the legislature is working on. The other thing we're gonna do is just get into the nuts and bolts of different issues. Now, whether it's the GIC, which held its uh, first meeting of the fall season yesterday morning, um, the good news is from the GIC, the good news is that there's no bad news right now to report. Um, there are no plans for any benefit changes or increases or any of those sorts of things as it stands right now. Now that being said, we need to keep a very, very close eye on everything that's going on at the GIC, particularly because of what we're facing right now with the economic uh, recession that has resulted from COVID-19. The state is hurting, uh, the state budget is still not completed for the year. That situation may get worse before it gets better. And as all of you know who have lived through these situations before, first of all, things are gonna get better. But secondly, in the meantime, 
some of the, the programs like your health insurance and cost of living increases and things that were trying to grow your benefits, um, some of those items might be targeted for cutbacks as a way to save money. And that's not something that we're gonna sit back and allow to happen, at least not without a fight. And we really need to be on our toes about these things. Now, the other piece of good news that came out of the GIC is that right now, there is a, an RFP that's gone out. Um, there's been respondents to the RFP, um, and this centers on basic life insurance benefits. And as you know, if you're a state retiree, you know that for quite some time, we've been working to increase basic life insurance benefits for state retirees and active employees. And the holdup with all of that has been the cost. Now, thankfully, the GIC, to their credit, and the Baker administration have included in this RFP some language re requesting that the responding companies provide within their bid some um, cost analysis and other ideas of how we can increase your basic life insurance benefits and keep the costs down. And we're very thankful for the GIC for gathering this information. It's not something that they were forced to do. They, they uh, welcomed the opportunity to work with us on this. And I want to thank Matt Vino, the executive director of the GIC, and his staff for the extra work that this has entailed for them to gather this information. I also want to thank Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito uh, for the support that they have given this issue and trying to find a way to resolve it, as well as the, as the legislative leadership as well. Everyone is working in the right direction here. Um, again, the hurdle has been the 10 or so million dollars that it would cost to, to increase life insurance benefits under the old structure. So now let's see what the GIC is able to come up with and, and we can move forward with that. But it was good news that we received yesterday morning. The other big news is that activity in Washington DC and around the country surrounding the windfall elimination provision and our efforts to pass um, a reform bill in 2020, those efforts have been jump-started in earnest over the past week. Now that Labor Day is behind us and the primary elections across the country have been completed, um, Congress is back to work, the staffs are back, not that they were ever gone, but activity is really fired up again. And we want to make sure that we are in a position to work with Congressman Neal and find an avenue to pass WEP reform in 2020. And there are going to be a couple of windows of opportunity to do that. Um, if the stars align. There's several what they call must pass pieces of legislation surrounding the budget and other very important federal funding issues that need to be brought up over the next two and a half to three months before the end of the year. And we wanna make sure that our coalition nationally is putting the pressure on and reminding their local members of Congress that this is an important issue that they must make a priority. Now we have a personal commitment from Congressman Neal that WEP reform is a personal priority of his and he's gonna do everything he can to move this legislation forward. But we need that same level of commitment coming from other parts of the country. So if you're watching this video and you live outside of Massachusetts, what you can do to help us is quite simple. Contact your local congressman and ask them to make Social Security windfall elimination provision reform a personal priority of theirs during the current congressional session. Now, if they are a Democrat, ask them to please sign on as a co-sponsor to H.R. 4540. That's Congressman Neal's legislation. And if they happen to be a Republican, that's okay too. This is a bipartisan issue. This is not Republican versus Democrat or Democrat versus Republican. It really comes down to what state someone happens to represent and whether or not retirees in that state are impacted. And if they're hearing from you as a constituent, you're gonna get their attention. That's the way this works. But ask them to support Social Security WEP reform and make it a personal priority of theirs. And that will be a huge, huge help to all of us going forward. Now we're gonna be keeping you up to date on, on all of these developments over the next several weeks and months through the end of the year. Um, in terms of the COLA benefit for state and teacher retirees, as we have reported in the past, the COLA as part of the state budget. Senator Rodericks will be talking about that this afternoon, but we're anticipating that the budget will be taken up in full during the month of October, and that state and teacher COLA will be most likely retroactive back to July 1st. So with that, I'm gonna sign off for today. If you are available this afternoon, 
If you have a few minutes, take some time, participate in our town meeting, listen in. You'll have the opportunity to ask some questions. Uh, we're hoping to conduct a few surveys while you're on the call just to gather some information from our members and get your thoughts on things. Um, but it's not going to take up too much of your time. I promise that we'll make it informative and engaging and together we're going to keep moving forward with all of this. But in the meantime, thank you for your support. Stay safe and we'll talk to you again soon.